Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue with uh, some more examples of uh, representations. So, what we will do, uh, we will consider two dimensional non abelian Lie algebra, we denoted it by G2 and then classify all possible two dimensional representations of that uh, two dimensional non abelian Lie algebra. So, here is the problem classify all two dimensional representations of G2. Recall that uh, G2 which is two dimensional non abelian Lie algebra. So, which is span of S comma T where the bracket S T is given by T. Okay. So, if you are interested in actually uh, coming up with the representation of G2, then it is easy to see that we have to define a map from G2 to G L of V, where this S will be mapped to some capital S and then T will be mapped to some capital T. Because this map is determined by capital S and capital T, we can denote it by S comma T. So, these two matrices S and T should be chosen so that the bracket S T should be equal to T. So, now uh, phi S T isomorphic to phi S dash T dash if or no only if again there exists some G L uh, invertible 2 by 2 matrix G in G L 2 of C such that. So, we are identifying this vector space with C 2. So, that uh, we are not we are working with the matrices. So, if we there exists some G in G L 2 of C such that uh, G S G inverse should be S dash and G T G inverse should be T dash. So, now uh, we can actually see that. Uh, so, this is a simple exercise whenever you have uh, equation like this bracket S T equal to T then T must be nil potent. Actually one can use the theory of uh, uh, Lie algebras. For example, uh, if we take uh, soluble Lie algebra, the least theorem actually says that uh, so there exists a vector inside your vector space such that that will be simultaneous eigen vector for that action of the Lie algebra, that soluble Lie algebra. So, in particularly, uh, you can prove that there exists a basis of the representation capital V such that with respect to that basis all the elements of the Lie algebra will be represented as upper triangular matrix. So, now if you have some element in the commutator then you can easily see that that commutator element must be nil potent because both like for example, for G 2 it is uh, non abelian, but it is easy to see that this is soluble. So, in particularly this S and T, so let us say you have a representation, so let us make it precise. So, if I have a representation of G2, let us denote it by phi, so V is any finite dimensional representation. Okay. So, then using Lie's theorem, one can actually get a basis of capital V with respect to that basis, all the elements of G2 will be represented as upper triangular matrices. In particularly, when we take this phi of S, phi of T which is going to be equal to phi of T. So, that implies actually phi of T is nil potent because it is commutator of two elements both are represented as upper triangular matrices. So, that forces that phi of T must be nil potent. So, that is what happens here as well. So, we can actually immediately conclude T is nil potent, but this is something one can prove without using the least theorem. So, let me give you the 
give you a quick proof. If S and T is equal to T, then that would imply that trace of T must be 0. So, there is a trace criterion. Suppose you have a operator which is acting on finite dimensional vector space V, then N is nil potent if and only if trace of n power k is 0 for all k greater than or equal to 1. So, one can prove this uh, using a uh, Vandermann matrix. Okay. So, determinant of Vandermann matrix we know that it has some specific form using that one can prove this characterization. I will leave it as exercise. So, this is somewhat standard uh, result. So, again this works for over any field, but we are actually assuming over complex number. So, we do not need to worry about the field. So, now trace of t is 0. What is about trace of t square? So, here is the simple computation t actually is given by s t minus t s. Now, t square will be t s t minus sorry s t minus t s. So, t square is t s t minus t square s which is also same as s t square minus t s t. So, now if you add these two then you get 2 t square which is exactly s t square minus t square s which is nothing but the commutator between s and t square and this forces that trace of t square is 0. So, now you have trace t is 0 trace t square is 0. So, this suggests that 2 t square equal to s t square suggests that k t power k should be equal to the bracket s t power k. Let us use induction to prove this. Now, calculate that k t power k plus 1 which is going to be this is s t power k minus t power k s. So, this is going to be exactly t s t power k minus t power k plus 1 s. Now, note that we already have t equal to s t minus t s. So, t equal to s t minus t s gives us that t power k plus 1 equal to s t power k plus 1 minus t s t power k. So, now add these two. So, you get k plus 1 times t power k plus 1 is equal to, so these two things get cancelled, s t power k plus 1 minus t power k plus 1 s. So, that means this term k plus 1 t power k plus 1 is nothing but the commutator between s and t power k plus 1. So, this tells us that trace of t power k plus 1 must be 0, because we are working over characteristic 0 field. So, that means trace of t power k is 0 for all k greater than or equal to 1. So, that implies t is nil potent. So, this is some basic linear algebra fact. One can use Lee's theorem to give quick proof and one can also prove it directly using this uh, trace trick. So, now uh, we want to understand like uh, when one can actually get simultaneous G uh, such that G s G inverse is s dash and uh, G t G inverse is t dash. So, let us fix the tuple s and t such that this uh, s t equal to t. So, we define the relation as before. Uh, s t is related to s dash t dash if and only if there exists g in g l 2 of c. So, let us write it here if this is the definition uh, such that g s g inverse is s dash and g t g inverse is t dash. Okay. So, we are interested in actually parameterizing all these tuples satisfying let us let us write capital A to be the pair s comma t such that s t the bracket is t. So, this condition should be satisfied. So, we are looking for the parameterizing set for this course uh, cosets. 
parametrizing set for this a modulo tilde okay how one can actually get it uh, for example what one can do uh, so because this gl2c act on this tuples one can without loss of generality assume that uh, uh, s is in the jordan canonical form okay sorry one, one can actually uh, just uh, assume t is in the jordan canonical form so now if if you take uh, nilpotent uh, matrix so then uh, if t the jordan form corresponding to t must be just to this uh, 2 by 2 matrix 0 1 0 0 so this is the jordan form that corresponds to t so in particularly uh, yes t this tuple related to s dash which is g g inverse comma 0 1 0 0 okay so let us determine very explicitly uh, what happens to this so now uh, we have that uh, s t is equal to t okay so without loss of generality so we can work with this as s so we can assume t is of the form 0 1 0 0 because t is nil potent uh, up to the gl2 conjugation we can we can actually uh, take t to be this 0 1 0 0 no issue so now uh, if t is 0 1 0 0 so then s t being equal to t tells you that 0 1 0 0 is exactly equal to the commutator uh, let us say s is some a b c d then this is a b c d comma 0 1 0 0 okay so this is what you get and a simple calculation indeed tells you that so this forces so if you calculate this commutator so this actually forces 0 1 0 0 is exactly equal to minus c a minus t 0 c so this is just computing the commutator of these two the commutator of these two is exactly equal to minus c a minus t 0 c so now this tells you that c must be 0 and a minus d must be 1 okay so this means d is equal to a minus 1 and c is 0 now what we are going to do so we are going to actually uh, use this in the matrix capital s so then s is of the form you can see that c is 0 and then we have a a minus 1 and then b is there 0 so this is the matrix that we are getting and t is 0 1 0 0 okay so now we are looking at uh, uh, this possibility so what's about once we have something like this okay so for given let's say a comma b which is complex numbers so one can define this representation pi a comma b from g2 to gl of c2 such that so this small s goes to a b 0 a minus 1 and then t goes to 0 1 0 0 so then i will leave it to you to check okay that pi a b indeed defines a representation of g2 okay so it is a simple calculation basically what you need to check you need to check that the bracket s t is t where this is s and this is t so given a comma b so we are able to actually uh, get a representation so now uh, this general discussion actually tells you that 
given any two dimensional representation can be parameterized by this a comma b but there could be some of them could be isomorphic to each other okay so it can happen that so it can happen that pi a b is isomorphic to pi c d okay so we have to determine when that is going to happen okay so let's analyze so pi a b is isomorphic to pi c d so then if and only if again there exists some g in g l 2 of c such that g a b 0 a minus 1 g inverse is going to be c d 0 c minus 1 and g 0 1 0 0 g inverse so that is going to be 0 1 0 0 ok. So, because we have already assumed that without loss of generality uh, t can be 0 1 0 0. Now, up to this uh, equivalence relation. So, if pi a b is actually isomorphic to pi c d. So, then this is what we will have ok. So, now let us call this is equation 1 and call this is equation 2. So, one can easily check that equation 1 gives us that the tuple a a minus 1 should be equal to the tuple c c minus 1 because both these matrices should have same eigenvalues because they are conjugate ok. So, since both the matrices have same eigenvalues. So, conjugate matrices will have same eigenvalues. So, they are conjugate. So, they must have same eigenvalues and eigenvalues of a b 0 a minus 1 is a a minus 1. So, this implies actually a equal to c ok. So, now uh, what is about uh, uh, equation 2? So, this is actually a simple calculation. So, maybe we leave it as exercise. So, the equation 2 actually tells us that g can be only of the form alpha beta 0 minus alpha sorry alpha where alpha is actually invertible complex numbers and beta could be any complex number ok. So, basically one way to see this uh, g commutes with 0 1 0 0. So, using that you can actually just prove that g must be of the form alpha beta 0 alpha. So, now uh, if you put back this inside the equation 1 ok because the g is of this form ok. So, now we can actually substitute this back to this equation 1 because equation 1 and equation 2 must be true simultaneously. So, if we substitute ok substituting g equal to alpha beta 0 alpha back into the equation 1 we get this is again a simple calculation because g a b a g a inverse a minus 1 g inverse equal to c d 0 g c minus 1. So, you can just do this calculation. So, this will give us that alpha b plus beta a minus 1 is equal to beta a plus alpha d and which is true if it if it choose this beta to be just alpha into b minus d and which is true if we just choose 
beta equal to alpha times b minus t. So, that means we are saying that uh, whenever we take these two representations pi of a comma b and pi c comma d, they are isomorphic if and only if a equal to c. So, what we proved pi a comma b isomorphic to pi c comma d. So, that is what we denoted. So, if and only if a equal to c. So, now what we can do we can actually define this following map. So, if you take the two dimensional representations of G 2 up to isomorphism or classes let us say classes of classes of V V is a two dimensional representation of G 2. Then from here to complex numbers we can just define a map. So, pi will be naturally isomorphic to pi a comma b then you send pi given this pi this value a. So, the way you get the value a is look at the matrix capital S ok. So, that is what actually takes this uh, form uh, a b 0 a minus 1 then we indeed prove that that uh, matrix that operator S has two eigenvalues a and a minus 1. So, basically a will be the largest eigenvalue ok. So, what is the map? The map is defined to be given a representation pi. So, we are mapping the largest eigen value of pi of s ok. So, this is the map that we are defining. Then it is easy to see that this gives us 1 to 1 correspondence because pi a b is isomorphic to pi c d if and only if a equal to c and given any a we can actually look at that a a minus 1 and then actually define uh, these representations ok. Given a comma b one can actually define these representations. So, this way actually uh, we are able to actually produce uh, this parametrizing set for these uh, representations ok. So, this gives one to one correspondence between these two dimensional representations of G 2 and this. So, this way we have classified all possible two dimensional representations of G 2. So, you can see that uh, the classification of uh, the representations of soluble Lie algebra that gets really really very ugly ok. So, even uh, classifying this uh, two dimensional representations uh, for this very small non abelian uh, Lie algebra G 2 itself is becoming very hard. So, what we have actually proved using this equation uh, the bracket S t equal to being t uh, and the dimension of this space does not matter. So, we proved that t must be nilpotent, but if t is nilpotent then the Jordan form corresponding to 2 will have like various choices when we increase the dimension ok. Maybe you take it as exercise and then see what are all the possible Jordan forms for nilpotent matter nilpotent operators. So, when we take like n equal to 3, n equal to 2 and so on. So, then uh, you have lots of choices there and then like so those choices will actually give you somewhat more com more complicated calculations uh, to determine what is yes ok. So, this gets really very ugly, but when we actually go to uh, simple Lie algebra. So, we have this uh, root space decomposition of simple Lie algebra which actually gives you what is called triangular decomposition. So, now using the triangular decomposition one can actually develop this beautiful theory that was proposed by uh, D N Verma. So, this highest weight theory actually kind of helps us 
to understand all possible irreducible representations of finite dimensional simple algebras. Okay. So, at least in this course, uh, we are going to see that for SLN and then we will use uh, SLN representation 3 to understand uh, the representation 3 of GLN. Okay, I will stop here, uh, we will continue with uh, more representation theory in the next class. Thank you.